All right, so let's get started. So we'll have a strap today and a couple blocks. And we're going to start lying down with the block under the sacrum. So this will be a very stretchy sort of a um, even more gentle sort of class. Not that stretching is necessarily so gentle. For some people, that's their biggest challenge. Anyway, here we are. We have our block handy. We have the belt nearby where we can reach it. And come down onto your mat, onto the floor. Ah, oh, big inhale, nice long exhale out the mouth. One or two more of those if you feel you need it. And as you feel like you've done some letting go, then you can start using the long, slow exhale to help you deepen inward, smooth things out. And then we'll have the block under the sacrum, putting the block underneath the legs, lifting up the block under the sacrum, and sliding the legs out to straight. And letting your body settle in, making whatever little adjustments you need for today. And with each breath, gently cooperating with the block a little more, a little reach through the heels, bringing the legs in together or hip distance apart, lengthening yourself over the block. And then we will take a few more breaths here on the block. And then the legs lifting up off that block, rolling down vertebrae by vertebrae. And let's take a block and put it between the knees. And take a moment there, giving that block a gentle squeeze and feeling a little bit like those inner thighs are drawing the block toward the pelvic floor. And then balancing the weight evenly across the feet as we scoop our way up into a bridge pose. Inhale, making space. Exhale, lifting into the space. And then checking the weight on your feet. Weight resting evenly on the inner edges of the feet and the outer, the front and the back, the right and the left. 
And it's giving that block a little squeeze. Feel like you're drawing the block up the inner thighs toward the pelvic floor. At the same time, there's a little press forward with the shins. Once again, we're doing a sort of lengthening over the block action like we were when we were on the block. And then roll you down, vertebrae by vertebrae. And the you know, on the floor. And we will take the block out, sliding the legs out to straight, getting your belt. And then bending the right leg, pulling that right thigh toward the chest. Right knee reaching past the top of your head, left heel reaching for the opposite wall. And belt around the right foot, extending that right leg up to the ceiling. Keep lengthening through the top of the head out the left foot, including your whole body in this shape, not just about the right leg. And then built into the right hand. Bring that right leg out to the diagonal side. Reaching the heel out and away from yourself at the same time you use that belt to draw the thigh bone back into the hip joint fully over toward the left. Trying to keep the left hip at least a little bit weighted down to the floor. And then bringing the leg up to the center, passing the belt off to the left hand as the right arm comes out to the side, a long line from that right heel spiraling through the spine and out the right finger. And bringing that right leg back up to the center. And then reaching along through the heel, bringing the right leg down. 
Ah, my little band, the left leg in. Long line from the left knee out the right heel. And then belt around the left foot, standing the left leg up. Couple more breaths here. And then belt into the left hand, taking that left leg out to the diagonal side. Reaching down through the right heel, reaching out through the left foot. And at the same time, drawing that left thigh back into the hip joint. And to the right hip. How do you feel not only the stretch you're getting, but also the shape of your body, the shape here on the And then bring that left leg up, passing up to the right hand. Left arm out to the side. We reach across from the left heel out the left fingertips. And back to the center, bringing that left leg down. Long reach through the heels, stretching the arms up overhead, and maybe being a little indulgent about a little squinging here on the floor, a little animal stretching like you're a cat. Something, some other animal, animal of your choice. 
And then making your way up to sitting. And we will sit in Sukhasana with the cross legs. Using those arms alongside, giving a little space here. And whatever squinging you want to do. And slowly releasing with the arms, letting the hands rest on the knees. Inhale and exhale. Pouring down the sides of the neck off the tops of the shoulders. And then really bringing your attention to your breath, you can soften or close your eyes. Letting things slow down a little more. Get a little smoother and a little more easeful. Opening your eyes, focusing a little bit more into the outer world here as we reach out through the arms, breathing the arms up overhead and breathing them down. Let's do that twice more. And then we'll breathe up through the right arm. So I'll be the mirror here, right and left mirror. Breathing up through the right arm, side bending over to the left. And a big in. Inhale and exhale, reaching down on a long diagonal to the left. And then the right hand on the left knee, reaching back with the left arm, turning yourself inside out. Long diagonal out through the left fingertips, going back up through the top of the head, going on forward diagonal. And swooping around and center forward. Unfurling the spine back up on top of the sitting bones. 
Inhale and exhale. And then changing across of the legs. And we'll go around with that on the other side. So we'll breathe up through the left arm, up and over to the right. And then a big inhale and exhale, reaching on the long diagonal over to the right. And left hand on the right knee, turning inside out. Reaching up and back, reaching up and forward on the diagonal. And the big inhale and exhale, sweeping that right arm around to the front and center. Nice big round breaths into the back of the body. And then coming up, unfurling that spine. Inhale and exhale. And we will come up in downward facing dog. And walking the dog or anything else you want to do here. Maybe using the extra wide feet if you want, though we did get our hamstrings a little warmed up already in the belt. And then finishing up with whatever you're doing here in Downward Facing Dog. And then here we are in the best Downward Facing Dog of this moment. Just feeling your breath. Just letting yourself be. And coming down, sitting back in child's pose. Coming up, unfurling the spine, sitting in simplified virasana. And then we will ascend up onto our knees. 
<laughs> and if you've still got that block somewhere handy nearby, maybe taking the block, putting it between the legs, and then a little push from the front to the back, feeling a little bit like you're rolling the thighs into the block and pressing back. But we don't want to literally roll the thighs in. We don't want the um, shins or feet to swing out. Get a little behind you. Hold on to the block. Feel like you're drawing the block up through the top of the head, up the front of the body and the inner thighs, and then pouring down the back. As we go into an Ustrasana, maybe just here with the arms up overhead, maybe bringing the hands to the sacrum, squeezing the block. And so also note having the block there might change things for you so you might not find your usual spot being quite so usual. So just feeling that. And then lifting up through the top of the head, lifting up through the arms, give that block another squeeze. And then we'll take the block out and descending back down onto our heels. Deep breath, coming up and downward facing dog. And then we'll just lengthen out to the plank, and we're just going to hold the plank. Though if you want to add a through the vinyasa at the end of the hold, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, here we are, stretching long and flat against the ceiling. Taking, let's see, let's do six to eight breaths here. And then we'll hinge back up to downward facing dog. And lifting the right leg up, reaching down through the left, uh, yeah, right leg up, lift, reaching down, there we go, through the left heel. Bending the right knee dog at the high fire hydrant. And through to the lunge. And we'll draw that left knee gently down into Anjayasana, the kneeling lunge. And then twisting to the right arms parallel to the floor. Looking the left arm over the outer right leg, stretching a little deeper into the twist. And then bringing that right hand around beneath the left and namaste. And then namaste, hands in the front. And here we'll have two options. So there's always many options. Number one, you can do the kneeling, hinge back, straightening the right leg, pulling up the right thigh, pulling up with the ball of the foot. Or if you're feeling up for it, maybe coming all the way up into the pyramid pose or parsvotanasana, straightening both legs. And another option up here is you can flex the foot when we're up on both legs as well. And so whatever we're doing, we're pulling actively up both legs, especially the front of the right leg, the front leg.
One more deep breath here. And then lunging forward to step forward. Into the concave back halfway up. Folding over. And then we'll round halfway up, pulling the abdominal muscles up into the spine, coming sort of halfway up. Just almost attach the sitting bones to the back of the thighs. Suspend and then releasing down. And then we'll let that down, fluff you out into the concave back, reaching the collarbones forward. And folding over. And let's do that once more, a little bit less lingeringly, rounding about halfway up. Letting yourself roll back down, scooping forward and up concave back, and folding over. And then coming all the way up to standing, big front body long. And let's take a circle all the way around with the arms. So don't try to make this bigger than your body will do at this moment. Breathing the arms around, not collapsing down into the back. And then pressing the arms down wide along through the top of the and we'll circle those shoulders, three, two, and one. Other direction. One more front to the back, interlocking the fingers, lengthening up the front of the body to lift the chest, to lift the chin. And coming forward, pressing out through the hands, hinging over. Releasing the hands. And then a little concave back, inhale and exhale. Stepping or jumping back to the plank. Maybe holding the plank again. Though so not for quite as long, or adding in a vinyasa, but really feeling the plank before you start into the vinyasa, taking that plank feeling with you all the way through the vinyasa, even into the upward facing dog or the cobra. There's still that strong center reaching from the feet to the top of the head, and then we're all back and downward facing dog. And we will go around with the left leg, lifting the left leg up. Bending the knee dog at the high fire hydrant. And through to the lunge. Bring the right knee down and into Anjayasana of kneeling lunge. And we'll twist to the left arms parallel to the floor. And then hooking the right arm over the outer left leg somewhere, pulling a little deeper into the twist. And bringing the left hand around to meet the right and namaste. Namaste in the center. And then whichever option you want with the left leg, probably the same option as the right leg, though possibly not. 
We'll go just the left leg straight, or maybe both legs straight. And maybe trying to add on flexing the left foot. You don't necessarily have to keep it flexed the whole time. And really drawing up the front of that left leg with the muscles, but also drawing up the right leg and we'll press back with the right thigh. Lunging forward to step forward. Into the concave back. Holding over. Deep breath. And then we'll do our little rolling halfway up. Pulling up like you're suspended by your belly button. Lifting. Letting that go. Diving forward and up into the concave back again. Or you know, deep breath. Coming up to standing. Big front body yawn, maybe the circle with the arms here. And pressing the arms down, long through the top of the head. There's one circle each direction, front to the back, back to the front, one more front to the back, and interlocking the fingers behind, lengthening up the front of the body, lifting the chest up to the ceiling, pouring down through the arm, coming forward. Placing the hands a little concave back. Inhale and exhale, jumping or stepping back to the plank. Really feel that plank for a moment, maybe just holding the plank or continuing through the vinyasa, any version. And there we all are back, downward facing dog. And we will lift our right leg up, reaching along through the heel. Bending the knee dog at the high fire height. And right knee to the right elbow into the pigeon. Maybe sitting on the block. And then starting in the high pigeon. Upper body lifted, being more active. Inhaling up the front, exhale, pouring down the back. And then lightening up on those hands as much as you can. And coming forward and over sleeping pigeon. Long sides going back, center line forward, really stretching yourself long as you come over. And then surrendering to gravity any amount, or maybe staying a little more active in your body, a little more reaching and stretching consciously.
Um, yeah. And then we'll go to the half dragonfly, rolling out to the right hip, reaching through the left leg. And our one long leg and one short leg. The right leg is bent, the left leg is straight. Or if that right knee doesn't want to stay bent anymore, you can have the right leg straight. And standing up on top of the sitting bones, let's do a forward bend long between both legs. Um, and then we'll reach up with the right arm and bending the right elbow, bringing the right hand as close as you can to the center of the upper back, just below your neck, or maybe a little over toward the left shoulder. Getting hold of the right elbow with the left hand. Feel like you're pulling those arms apart, shoulder blades going down the sides, long through the top of the head. And then we'll come over side bending to the left. Inhale and exhale. Be a little more focused on that stretch down the right outer arm. Don't force the side bend to be bigger than it can be. Keeping the right arm there, take your left arm down onto the leg and then pull that right elbow back and open a little more. And then extending that right arm out into Parvrita Janu And pulling with that right arm down to face the left leg. Janu Shirasasana. Um, um, and then we'll just bring that left leg around, standing back up to downward facing dog, and going through another vinyasa or knots. As you can probably see I'm doing the knot. And then there will all be a downward facing dog. All right, around we go with our left leg, lifting the left leg up. Bending the knee dog at the high fire hydrant. And then left knee to the left elbow and to the pigeon. And we'll take a few moments in the high pigeon with the cobra action. Being a little more active, lifting up the front, down the back. And then see if you can lighten up a little on the hands, make those back muscles work a little bit more. So you might not be able to literally lighten up very much, but having that intention to do so will engage the muscles a little bit.
And then coming forward and over sleeping pigeon, lengthening yourself over. And then keeping as much energy in that lengthening action as you want. And then on um, up and to the half dragon, rolling onto the left outer hip, maybe straightening that left knee if it needs to be straightened out. And here's our one long leg and one short leg. And let's come forward. And come um, up, standing a little on those sitting bones, reaching wide. Let's bring the left arm up, bending the elbow, reaching for the middle back, maybe a little more toward the right shoulder, getting hold of the elbow, and then trying to even everything out. Three long parallel lines, the top of the head, the two sides, a little pull and pull with the arms. And just breathing here. And then side bending over to the right. Inhale and exhale. And we'll release the right hand down onto the right leg. Keep the elbow bent another moment. Leave reaching through the elbow, pulling it back, a little twisting right up toward the, or left up toward the ceiling. And then extending that left arm out into Parvrita Janushir Sasana. And then a big inhale and exhale, pulling down toward the right leg with that left arm, turning to face your right leg, coming forward over the leg. And, um, and then we'll swing that right leg around and um, up onto our feet into the forward bend. 
Taking a moment, getting centered on the two feet. And then we'll do our little roll up and concave back. Convex back, as it were, pulling the abdominal muscles up into the spine, really letting that upper body head and neck hang. Letting that go, pouring over, swooping out into the concave back. And then folding over. And we'll make our way back to downward facing dog, either through a vinyasa as many times as you want or not. And then once we're in downward facing dog, taking a few breaths, really being in this downward facing dog of this moment. Coming down, sitting back in child's pose. And then uh, we will make our way down to Shavasana. Or you can stay in child's pose if you are enjoying that. All right. And on a nice long exhale. Letting the weight of your body rest into the earth. By softening and closing. And then maybe noticing after your eyes close, sometimes even with our eyes closed, we actually are having a little bit of a strong gaze through the eyes. So just see that the, the eyes themselves, themselves, your gaze is also softening. Maybe even feeling like it starts to turn inward. Gently letting that draw down into the earth as well.
And then breathing back into your body, into the room. Moving the fingers and toes, getting the circulation going. And stretching the arms up overhead. Bending the knees. To gently make your way up to sitting. And then sitting in any comfortable position, taking a few more moments, sitting quietly inside yourself. Namaste. Thank you for coming.